Welcome to our series on Applied Regression Analysis. I'm Mark Ledbetter, and this is Lecture Video 9, Review of Basic Statistics, Part 5. In this, dis in this video, we're going to review students' T distribution, the chi-square distribution, and the F distribution. So students' T distribution, you should ne definitely know, um, but you may not know what I'm about to tell you about it. So we can call this statistic here, T, the student's uh, T distribution. Now, X has to be distributed as a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. Then if we take a sample of size n, then x bar minus mu of x, that's not very neat, is it? Mu of x divided by the standard deviation of x over the square root of n. Now, we can put parentheses here. So we could write this in the way I like to write it <clears throat> for computational purposes, is x bar minus mu of x divided by s of x. So what we're doing is this is like a z-score, except instead of having sigma down here, we have s. So we are now estimating not only mu, or well, we're not only estimating yeah, mu using x bar, but we also have to estimate sigma using s, the standard deviation, sample standard deviation. So this t then has a t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So df is degrees of freedom. Okay. And the t distribution is symmetric. And the mean for the t distribution is 0. And the standard deviation is bigger than... Um, one. Okay, so what happens is as <clears throat> as n gets bigger, the t distribution approaches the standard normal distribution. Okay, so if I were to draw the standard normal distribution, well, I guess it should go up here. It would let me uh, let me redraw this a little darker. The standard normal distribution is going to be narrower. It's going to have a smaller um, standard deviation than that of the t distribution. But as n gets bigger, this t distribution gets closer and closer to being a z um, score, a z distribution, a standard normal distribution. So now, um, we're not going to do any any problems with this right now. I just want you. This is very. This is very important. You definitely want it on your um, lecture notes and your uh, formula sheet. Okay, and you'll definitely want that it has this degrees of freedom. Okay, the distribution t with n minus one degrees of freedom. Now, this is another thing that you should write down on your. A formula sheet, this is a general form. In other words, if we have um, theta hat, some estimate uh, of, of, the, of the mean, okay, some estimate of the mean of a distribution, then um, it's, we subtract off the mean of this uh, sample statistic and divide by its standard deviation, then it too has a t uh, distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Um, but n here is going to depend on what theta is. As you'll see, uh, this becomes a much more complicated uh, thing. So if we have two random samples taken from two independent uh, normal distributions, uh, or populations that have the same, this is very important, the same uh, 
population standard deviation. So let's say that the first is a normal with, the first distribution is a normal with mu1 and sigma, and the second is a uh, normal distribution with um, mu2 and sigma. So you notice that sigma is the standard deviation for both distributions. Now we can define theta hat as x bar 1 minus x bar 2. Could you do x bar 2 minus x bar 1? Absolutely. It's really just which one you name x bar 1 and which one you name x bar 2. You just have to be consistent. So then we can use that as our theta hat and then the mu hat of that will be mu 1 minus mu 2. And it turns out that the standard deviation of x bar 1 minus x bar 2, if the variances are equal, or if the standard deviations are equal, is s sub p times the square root of 1 over n plus 1 over n2. And s sub p is what we call the pooled variance, pooled standard, pooled uh, variance, because it's squared. Or actually, I need to say pooled sample variance, because it's s, not sigma. And so we take n minus 1, uh, n, n1 minus 1 times s1 squared plus n2 minus 1 s2 squared all over n1 plus n2 uh, minus 2. And so this t statistic here is a t with n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom. All right. Um, now we have a chi-squared distribution. So this is our um, very important uh, distributional requirement that x is normally distributed. It does not work at all if x is not normally distributed. Okay, has to be that. Then if we take um, n minus 1 of s sub x squared over sigma x squared, that has a chi-squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And here I've written uh, x uh, chi-squared nu and nu is equal to n minus 1 in this case. So this relationship here is something like the t above that we'll prove in probability theory later this semester. <clears throat> We'll also prove this next distribution, f distribution. So again, we have um, two distributions. Both are normally distributed. Uh, they have different means and different variances. That's okay. Uh, so we, we calculate the sample standard deviations or variances of both samples. And then we have, um, we could call it capital F, is equal to S1 squared divided by sigma 1 squared over S2 squared divided by sigma 2 squared. That has an F distribution with N1 minus 1 degrees of freedom in the numerator and N2 minus 1 degrees of freedom in the denominator. And so we can, it, it's a skewed distribution similar to the chi-squared, but notice that the peak is a little more peaked, if you will, and the chi-square has a very uh, rounded peak, okay? And so we write this as f of nu1 comma nu2, where nu1 equals n1 minus 1, and nu2 equals n2 minus 1 degrees of freedom. And if you're not familiar with the S distrib f distribution, that's okay. We'll cover it later when we get to actual examples. Okay. So that is it for this small video. I hope that you've uh, updated your uh, formula sheet like I suggested. Please don't forget to scan your lecture notes by midnight of the date listed on the course calendar. And please be neat because you're going to use those for your homework, uh, not I. And if you have questions, please come to my virtual office hours or email me. I am always happy to help you, and I'll see you next time.